Hello and welcome to the Dittenworks YouTube channel or Facebook channel wherever I decide to post this video. Okay, today I thought I'm going to get up really early and do the only repair I've got so I can get on and finally finish these because I've been in a little bit of a competition with the former technical director of Celestian Ed Form that we challenged each other that our projects would be or we try and beat each other to finishing our projects. Now, Ed's is a lot more complicated than mine. He's building a digital crossover network with a one-off pair of Celestian, what he's named SL650s, and he's rebuilt a pair of System 6000 dipole subs, veneered them, working on all the things. He's really, really steaming ahead. All I've got to do is finish off the internal damping in these, wire up the crossovers, build some little external boxes for the crossovers and I'm done. And every time I try to get them done, something happens. So this morning's repair was a damaged tweeter on a Celestian SL600 SI, one of the last, well, the last of the copper tweeter variant in the Aerolam cabinet. And I was making good progress on my white ones until I get a call saying, can you help me with my very poorly and very dirty SL6s. I mean, the cabinets are not in good condition. They're starting to split at the back. The veneer's gone in places. Drive units are filthy, and one of them has a completely cracked tweeter. So, unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to do my white SLs today, but it doesn't really matter. What I wanna do for this customer is these speakers he's dropped off are not gonna look anything like as bad when he collects them. So I'm gonna crack on and do that today. And I thought I'd just shoot a little video showing what I was gonna do. So I'll leave it there. And hopefully the next time you see these speakers, they will look a lot better than they did and sounding correct as well. See you in a bit. So what we have is some pretty knocked about cabinets, pretty filthy drive units, some oxidization on the face plates, screws have oxidized, which is pretty normal for them. Um, even my uh, YSL project ones, I only left them for a little while. I wrapped them up in a towel, which has obviously got a bit damp somehow, and the screws have oxidized. I have got replacement ones. I've got replacement ones of these as well, so I'll, I'll change those for the customer. But yeah, we've got splitting um, on the cabinets. Now my friend Matt is really good at, at clamping these and, and, and gluing them. But I'm not going to do that with these. I've got another idea. I mean, that's really splitting open there. Now, the only thing that really concerns me is if the cabinets are in this condition, they've been somewhere that's got hot and cold and damp, and I'll really have to take these right apart and get right down to the crossovers and have a look, see what's going on there and test everything. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but that tweeter has a hole in it. So we're going to have to replace that unit. I'll have to test this one and check that's okay clean them all up but basically guys i'll see if i can make these look a lot better oh the other thing missing grill cloths yeah okay right i must crack on and we'll see if we can make these look tip top okay the plot thickens actually the tweeter that doesn't work is the one that's in the best condition so i need to investigate what is wrong with that because the cracked tweeter is the one I'd want to replace and I don't have too many spares. And obviously I don't want the bill to go up too much for the customer. So it is now 12 o'clock. I'm going to take my automatic watch off because working near magnets is probably not going to do that a lot of good. So we'll take the time when I'm done and we'll see how long it takes me to get this all sorted. Okay, it's uh, five past two. I didn't get these done as quickly as I'd hoped because um, as usual on my day off, I do get quite a lot of messages, emails, phone calls about repairs and hi-fi advice and so on and so forth, which I don't mind. And one of the phone calls was my friend Matt Casey and we were discussing a very unusual pair of Ditton 44s that he's got in for repair. So yeah, it's taken me a couple of hours, but I'm quite happy with how they've turned out that essentially we had a tweeter that the copper, the electroplated copper had just degraded so much that it had started to fall to pieces. It did actually work, but it started to break, break down. 
Um, unfortunately, the tweeter that wasn't working was perfect and I really didn't want this repair job to start spiraling out of control because once you start replacing two tweeters and doing any cabinet work and having to work on the crossovers, things start getting expensive and you would have to evaluate how much, for argument's sake, a pair of Celestian SL6s in that condition are really worth, irrespective of sentimental value. <coughs> Excuse me. So I managed to repair the tweeter that wasn't working and I'll put some pictures up to show you where that was damaged. It was the lead wire, which is a pretty common fault with these, um, especially if somebody's taken them apart and they don't know what they're doing. That if you take the base driver out and you try and pull the foam wadding out, that pulls on the lead wire um, at the terminal. It pulls on the wires at the terminal end and breaks the lead wire. So I've managed to repair that. Then the fragile, really dis just falling to bits tweeter, I've just replaced that with another one that I had and I've matched that tweeter with a new crossover. Most people will probably know by now that the SL6 and SL600, the crossovers were hand-tuned to the HF units. So you can't really just chuck in a new tweeter. It, it, it'll work, but it's not perfect. So I've always, if I've kept tweeters, kept the match crossover that goes with it because it's the HF that was tuned. So one new crossover, one new tweeter, transplanted the um, base drivers, the wadding, everything else over into a spare pair of cabinets I had. So we'll move the camera and I'll show you how they've come out. So I think most will agree that's quite an improvement on how they were. And if we remove all cleaned up, okay, there's still a little bit of sort of, oxidization on that tweeter face plate there's not a lot i could do about that i could change the face plate but again things will start getting out of control in terms of cost and that is that one I'll just plonk that on there for now and over here i've just rested them on the floor for now Let's see if we can get out of the shadows on that and that one with a new hf unit okay there's a little bit of discoloration on this cabinet but it's considerably better than it was and all cleaned up nice drive units so this one's now got a new crossover new tweeter drive units cleaned up and rehoused in new cat or other cabinets that were complete with their grills so that makes them look a little bit better and we just press play Not turning, just coughing out heat. Coffee this morning was bitter and weak as a cold wind blowing. And they seem to be working absolutely fine. I'll put them up on stands and give them a proper demonstration for the customer when he comes to collect them. But as far as I'm concerned, apart from slight discoloration between those two grills, so I've replaced these as well. These are new ones. Um, the other ones were so oxidized, I just really couldn't do anything about it. Uh, the screws I've replaced for ones that aren't as rusty, but I didn't have any spare tweeter ones, so unfortunately they're being reused. But with the grills on, you'd never know. So there we go. That is a pair of SL6 original ones brought into a condition that's just a little bit better than they were. So in a nutshell, I've managed to salvage and refurbish pretty easily a pair of Celestian SL6s. The tweeter was repairable, the base drivers are quite easy to clean up. Luckily I had a replacement tweeter and luckily I'd kept some old, what I'd considered were in fair condition cabinets, certainly in better condition than the ones that came in. And that's that. So that's just my little video today of something I'd, I'd really hoped to do these speakers in about an hour. <laughs> but with repairing the lead wire on the tweeter and answering various emails and calls, it's taken me a little bit longer. But still, all managed to be done in one day, but unfortunately means my poor old white SLs will be put back on top of the wardrobe and wait for another day for me to uh, carry on with them. I have got an interesting review coming up on Wednesday. I am going to be reviewing the Falcon Acoustics Q7s 
which is essentially the LS35A cab uh, box, uh, no, LS35A drivers and crossovers in optimal cabinets, something that Malcolm Jones worked on. Anyway, take care guys, I'll catch up with you soon.